Procognita, Get Agile Podcast. The Responsibility Process in the Time of War. Interview with Christopher Avery. So, hi and welcome to Get Agile Podcast. I'm Tomek Vykowski from Procognita and today with me is Christopher Avery. Well, you're mostly known for the, the Responsibility Process. Welcome. Thank you, Tomek. It's great to be here on this, uh, right. this historic occasion. Oh yeah, it is. Um, uh, so uh, one of one of the things is uh, so people can learn about the responsibilities that is their responsibility book you wrote. Uh, although for those who haven't read the book yet, so maybe we'll start with like uh, I don't know few. Yeah, you get it. Okay, okay. I have my copy, but not here in the in the office. So yeah. Also available in German. Okay, so for people from German, you have a, you have your own option. For people from all other countries, you need to learn Pol- uh, sorry English or German. Okay, so for people who don't know the responsibility process yet, can we just get a like a you know quick intro to to the idea? Absolutely, happy to. So there's a common understanding. Uh, there's a common model for for looking at the mind. It's a very simple model. It says we have an upper mind and we have a lower mind. So the lower mind is ego driven. It's where we're defensive, we're resistant. Um, The upper mind is where we're more resourceful. This is our unique genius, our unique inspiration. Um, And so there's lots of models uh, out there that that support this from Carol Dweck uh, to the um, leadership circle tool to, to others. And uh, so the idea of the responsibility process started decades ago uh, with the idea of in the upper mind, we're owning it. We're owning our life, we're owning our mind, and we're owning our reality. And in the lower mind, we're not owning it. We're being victims, we're coping, we're suffering, believing we have no power. Um, And the responsibility process then is, work done over 20 plus years by my mentor and his mentor to document the mental states that people were demonstrating when they would come to them for coaching and they were giving reasons for why they couldn't have what they wanted, why they were failing. And they created this beautiful, simple, uh, but powerful model which I've named the responsibility process with their permission. And what it says is every time something goes wrong, you have a little conflict in your mind between what you want and what you have. And that throws off a little bit of energy, which we label anxiety or angst, frustration, upset. And that triggers this cognitive pattern in our mind Uh, And we enter this pattern at lay blame. So our mind hands us an answer. It's Tomek's fault. Okay. And and just just to make it clear for people who are uh, listening to us, then you can look for the debt responsibility model. And and, and Christopher is just showing it to us. So just for those people who are just listening to us. Sorry for the interruption. Sure. So you can download this in, I think we have 27 languages now from responsibility.com. A free download, no opt-in required. Uh, so just go to responsibly.com and follow the link to the process. Um, and you can download this as a PDF with the, with the summary on the back. So, so what this shows is that we're very much emotionally driven, even as intelligent as we are and as logical and and rational as we think we are. Um, and so the first answer in my mind hands me is, is probably based on, uh, computational efficiency, right? So blame is the easiest way to deflect. Um, And if I happen to buy the answer that my mind hands me, then I use my intellect to prove that somebody else has to change before my life can get better. But still, I'm a victim and still my assumption is that I'm powerless. And so these are all just mental states. So lay blame is a mental state, which means we can stay there for a second or a lifetime or we can get off of the mental state. So this is where awareness and consciousness comes in. So if I can be aware that I'm blaming and if I can be aware that I don't want to because I'm powerless in that state, then I can choose to stop blaming 
and the way the psyche works is that you graduate upward so if i stop blaming then the next answer that would come into my mind is well it's the circumstances right it's the war it's COVID. it's the economy it's uh traffic it's the budget it's the process um, and that lets us off the hook so our ego is happy right? but we're still coming from a place of powerlessness and i work for people who want to be resourceful and who want to get into their resourceful mind so uh, if we decide to stop giving excuses or justifying then the next thing that happens is we find ourselves blaming ourselves so i'm a dummy i'm adult it's my fault i shouldn't have done this i deserve this um, and uh, this is where uh, we call that pseudo responsibility because society has taught us to beat ourselves up if we make a mistake and, and they reward us they say oh good girl she's taking responsibility so i would call that small r responsibility as character or as conforming to society and not the capital r responsibility which we use and so on from shamed if we decide to quit beating ourselves up because we realize there's nothing really wrong with us and everybody makes mistakes and the only way you find out where the limits are is to go past them etc uh, then you graduate to obligation which is obligation is the feeling of being trapped or burdened in a promise or a commitment that you no longer want so i have to go to my boss's stupid meeting i have to pay the mortgage i have to do favors for my spouse i have to run the kids around i have to i have to i have to um, it's also a pseudo responsibility because we've been taught our whole lives that if we're doing what we're supposed to do even if we hate it that we're quote being responsible and finally above the line if we refuse all of these mental states so finally if i refuse to be trapped or burdened then i can get to a place in my mind that's different in terms of how it operates from these other mental states this mental state of responsibility is where we're truly owning our life and the situation we're in being willing to look at it with open eyes and clear eyes and we find much more resourcefulness there much more creativity um, much more adaptive reasoning uh, abilities from the mental state of responsibility so we define each of these states are are defined very concretely uh, on the poster download we define responsibility as owning my power and ability to create choose and attract so and what's behind that no oh, go ahead no just, just going to say that you can blame other people you can blame the system you can blame yourself you can say you have to because i have no other option or you can say okay it's my choice to to go that direction right right so our our premise is that we're always creating choosing and attracting our life even the parts we don't like right so our premise is that we're just not always owning that so when we start owning that we got ourselves into this situation and and we're the only ones that are going to get ourselves out then we start getting more brilliant more wise we become a much better leader uh, of ourselves and others yeah one of the things i notice uh, is that it seems super simple the responsibility process seems super simple so for the i mean my first reaction is yeah whatever and then when you deep dive into into that and try this uh, for a longer period then, then you see the, the the benefits here yes uh, so we all walk around in a uh, what i call a, a cultural trance of coping below the line and uh, we're very good at it and coping is a huge market uh, we're, we're taught to develop coping skills to to just buck up and, and deal with it and we're taught that that's just the way it is you have to take the bitter with the sweet in life and when you actually practice this over a period of time as you just said Tomic, then what you start to realize is that all these coping skills that we were taught um, are a fallacy actually they don't bring us satisfaction and success at all uh, they just um, kind of defend our our defensiveness and resistance um, and the place for real growth and change real personal growth 
uh, and change is, is to get here to the mental state of responsibility. It's also the place where we get to get rid of problems. Yeah, one thing that stuck me a few years ago was that, you know, the smarter we are, the better excuses we create. So it's not about being smarter to get more responsible, but it's it's not the way. Bingo. Absolutely. Yeah. Smarter, smarter people. And you and I both work with, you know, super smart people. The smarter we are, the better we are at blame and, and justify and shame, too. So few few days ago, when we were uh, scheduling this podcast, we there was idea about talking in the about the responsibility in the COVID world. But right now we have a even bigger situation, very bigger tension uh, on Ukraine when there's a war on Ukraine, uh, and we decide uh, together just before starting the uh, this podcast is to try to look into into that direction because uh, there is a huge tension uh, in people on Ukraine, but also in Europe, in US, in other other countries. So uh, if you can look at the model from the people having a tension right now, people having a, you know, feeling powerless right now uh, with what is happening on Ukraine. Yeah, first of all, I'm sorry. Um, so I've had, uh, you know, the, the two years of COVID has given me and my company tremendous experience in dealing with a huge justify. Right. So for the last two years, COVID has been the biggest justify on the planet. But the reason I can't have what I want is because of COVID. And, um, and you know, the, the thing to do about that is to realize that you may not have seen it coming. You may not be the one causing it, but you're the one creating your life around it. Right. And so is it a scary thing? Yes. Do I allow myself to fear it? No. And the reason is that when I go into fear, anxiety, and deep stress, I'm less powerful. I'm less resourceful. Um, and so what, what do I do? I face it. So, so one of the things that I'm hearing more, more and more often, you know, there is a conflict and I, I cannot do about it. And I think, and I say, well, I think we can, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a lot that we can do about it. Uh, what, what, what I'm doing today is I'm sending a message to my membership. So we have some membership programs, the immersion over time and responsibility mastery. And we have people from all over the world, especially all over the, uh, central and, and Eastern Europe and people from your country and people from Russia. And I'm sending a message there today that, uh, you know, if the, first of all, that we don't judge you based on the actions of others in your country. And we're here to serve you and support you. And if you're embarrassed in any way or concerned about retribution from showing up at one of our meetings, uh, please don't be. I won't allow it to happen. And nobody in the responsibility community would be thinking in that way, right? We only have love and compassion for for you and each other. And you know, we practice forgiveness for um, you know for people that, uh, that do tremendously disastrous things. So that's what I can do today. Um, I don't know what I'll think about what I can do tomorrow. Um, yeah, but. The thing I'm, I'm trying to give people right now is, okay, the, so, so they never heard about the responsibility process, uh, my guess, uh, and they are now feeling powerless and how they can use the responsibility process. So how can we help them so they take the responsibility and, and they feel powerful again uh, after listening to us? So what, what they can do? I want to I wanna make two points here and I'll... I'll... I'll state them up front and then let's take them one at a time. 
Um, so the first one is to have some compassion for yourself and others. The second one is to ask yourself uh, and, and your family members and your teammates and your neighbors, ask yourself, what do I want or what do we want? So let me get into, let me get into both of those. Um, so in terms of, of self-compassion, below the line, there's all this anxiety and, and fear and judgment and criticism. Um, and uh, what I found is that um, blaming ourselves or, uh, you know, beating ourselves up or other things around getting ourselves into a situation that we don't want to be in it stops us from changing and change happens much better with compassion, forgiveness, uh, acceptance, love, etc. So, you know, if you're in blame about uh, Putin and his colleagues, or if you're in justify about being trapped in a part of the world, you know, that, that is under siege and you can't do anything about, you know, if you're in shame about the fact that you had an opportunity to make a different choice a year ago or five years ago and you didn't do it, all of those things, right? Um, the thing to do is to is to say, I forgive me and I forgive them, right? The part about I forgive them. I forgive them doesn't mean to let them off the hook. It means to let yourself off the hook, <laughs> right? I'm not going to hold on to this, right? It'll eat me up, right? And I also and, know... and I still can do nothing about it, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, maybe I can't, but but I can. So one more thing about this compassion part is um, uh, is one of the well, no, let's not go there. I'm going to move to the intention part. So the common, the most common question that every culture I've worked in has been taught to ask when things go wrong is what should I do? Right. And sometimes we ask what's the right answer, right? So what's the best practice, right? What do experts say? Uh, but it all maps to, you know, what's the right answer or what should I do? Those two questions map to shame and obligation. Right. They don't go to original thinking. They don't go to what's my genius, what's my inspiration, right? So the fastest way I've found to actually get to responsibility is to ask the question, what do I want, right? So look at this mess, look at this crap, right? What do I want about this? And you may have to pose the question for a while. You may have to do some brainstorming. You know, you may have to use all those wonderful facilitation techniques that we know on ourselves to actually access the resourceful and creative part of our own mind. When you do that, you will find your power again. So what you're saying is you need to let go of the frustration to reach out to deep thoughts, let's call it this way, like, uh, you know, understanding what you want to achieve and then rather than doing whatever everyone else is doing is just decide what you want to do and, and, and try to achieve that one. This is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. That's what you're hearing. Yes. All right. One thing I want to stress out here is about, uh, you know, taking the response, the responsibility in the quotes in this case is like, uh, okay, I should do something before uh, about this one before I should move to the other country. I should, you know, invest in something. I should change the job and all the stuff happening uh, right now in many people's minds. Right. And, and uh, something what I'm hearing here is just a shame. It's not a responsibility in this case. Right. Oh yes. We, we take a lot of actions out of shame and guilt. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I, I, I recommend against that. I recommend not taking action out of shame and guilt. Yeah, I recommend taking the action that you want to. And let, let, me, let me give you a, a small example of this. Um, so, uh, so I make charitable contributions to uh, a lot of things that I believe in. Um, and it makes me feel great. 
uh, uh, to do that. There is a there's a known dynamic of people who give in order to assuage their guilt, right? rather than giving because it really makes them feel good. And I was working with one of my advanced students uh, a few months ago, and she said, I'm feeling called to give to some charities. She said, but, um, but I sort of also have this feeling of, of guilt associated with it, like I should. And she's an advanced student. She's been practicing this a lot, so I didn't have to walk her through a lot of steps. All I had to do was look at her and said, I think that's very cool, and I wouldn't do it until you 100% want to. Right. And her, she immediately, you know, changed. So she had a breakthrough and, and decided to move from shame and obligation to, to want to, where she was free to give or not give. So I tell people that a lot in shame and obligation. And, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? And I said, well, do you want to? Yeah. So, so what you're saying is like a lot of... Uh reaction to the to the current situation will be shame this is what you would discuss or the obligation i'm supposed to do because other people are doing this one right is what i'm hearing correct yes and again we have those layers of societal conditioning to operate here and what you and i what you and i are saying here is pull up pull up okay so okay People, even if they figure out that they're in just shame and or obligation, what they can do now? So the best thing to do is to have a conversation about what we want right, that we can do something about, or maybe, maybe what we want that we don't know how to do anything about it yet, but talking about it will maybe lead us to what's the next step. The, the other thing that helps me, and I've been practicing this for 30 years, the other thing that helps me is to face reality. So a lot of our fear and anxiety comes from our ego trying to hold on to yesterday's reality, trying to defend yesterday's reality. Uh, Something we see... Yeah, I was saying something we've seen during the COVID. Let's let's go back to the old on all the normal, let's say, right? Right. Right. So so I mean, you know there may be some people that really get offended by me saying this, but here's one way to look at this. Oh, look, World War One and two all over again. All right, when are, when are we going to learn that this happens in northern, eastern Europe? Yeah, and not much learning from that, I guess. Right, yeah. And, I mean, that may feel harsh, but practicing 100% reality means taking a complete view of, of reality, excuse me, 100% responsibility means having a clear eyed view of reality. Yeah, I get, I get a conversation. I mean, the, the previous uh, episode was with the conversation with Richard Sheridan and he said, okay, for like a, one year, we've been into the, that's gonna end in eight weeks from now. So, so they, they've been just blocked by this, this idea, it's gonna end. I mean, the, the COVID's gonna end. So, so we can sure. get exactly the same here, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, same thing. <clears throat> with COVID, yes. So, you know, in my case, I think the thing to do is to prepare for surprising change. That's the thing to do. Well, one thing you mentioned before, and I just, just wanna, I wanna go back a little bit, is you said, okay, have a conversation about what is your goal. And what you, by conversation, you mean the monologue with myself, you mean the dialogue, what, what works better for people? Right. So just to be clear, I didn't, I didn't say what is my goal. I said oh, what do I want, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. What do I want? So the, the keys, so the responsibility process is simply a signal device in our mind. 
That's all it is. It's a signal device. It won't go away. I've been studying it for 30 years, working with it for 30 years. I still have one in my mind. Still, every time something goes wrong, my mind goes, goes to blame. Right? And so that proves to me that this is a cognitive process that's in me and everybody, and you can't change it. So all you can do is use it as a signal device. So I'm, I'm very aware the moment that I have a thought of blame and I get off of it that fast. So I move from blame to responsibility, you know, in a second or two where other people get stuck for, for a long time. Um, like, like, like the whole life. <laughs> yeah. Like their whole life. Right. So the, the to do's are to develop your mind, your consciousness using three tools of consciousness, which are intention, awareness, and confront. So the responsibility process is creating awareness, right? So if I become aware of where I am, then I can choose to stop that narrative in my mind. And when I stop that narrative in my mind, I graduate up a level. Intention means two things. One is have an intention to get to responsibility, the mental state of responsibility around every upset in your life. But the second practice of intention is to get to know your unique inspiration, your unique genius, your belief systems, your assumptions, and also your negative programming, your negative conditioning, right? So that you can overcome it. So the question, what do I want, goes straight to intention. Right? Your powers of intention are tremendous. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can prove it by those people who operate in obligation in a situation that they despise, and yet they feel that they must stay there in order to pay the bills or in order to look good in society or to not make somebody else unhappy, right? So that takes great intention to actually choose to stay in something that you despise. Um, and so you can use that same intention to ask yourself, okay, how can I change this? So that's what I meant by asking the question, what do I want? It's a magic question. It's the most brilliant question I know. Yeah. But see, most of us are trained to look outside of ourselves for the answer. You know, but your answer is inside yourself. The answers you get from others are their answers. And, and one, one thing I've, I've learned from you is that the moment you catch yourself lay, laying blame, this is the moment you should pat yourself on the back because you just, you know, observe instead of going to, into shaming that you will lay blame again. Yes, thank you for that. Reminding me that, um, like, uh, you know, what I've observed from my students over the years and from me too, when I was new to this is we get mad at ourselves when we catch ourselves blaming or unjustify. All that does is create more shame, right? So instead we should celebrate when we catch ourselves because we're normal. There's nothing wrong with us. This is a signal device that's in our mind. It's there to help us understand how we're reacting instead of responding. Uh, to a problem. So yes, pat yourself on the on the back when you catch yourself and just say, okay, time to let that go and climb up the chart. All right. So I will close with one more question. Given given the current situation, given what we what we know, uh, rather than giving the straight, simple answer to people who are feeling the anxiety of the current situation of the war. Uh, what would be like a one, two things you would recommend people where to start from the responsibility process, how, how, to, how to start and how to go for forward with that? Um, thank you. So I've already mentioned download the poster. So it's a PDF poster, double sided, has the process on the front and has a summary of the things we just talked about uh, on the back. And it's available in 27 languages and post it everywhere. So you see it. So use it as an awareness device, which then can also impact your intention and your ability to face, which we call confront. Um, secondly, uh, I recommend that you go to responsibility.com and join the responsibility community. 
it's, uh, it's free and it's a learning community. Uh, we no longer market by trying to get your email address in exchange for some ethical bribe. We don't offer any ethical bribes. We give it all away for free. If you want to get the latest from us on our you know, newsletter, then join the community. When, when you do join the community, you get a welcome series that introduces you to the responsibility process and the keys to responsibility and uh, to the community and to the company. And at the end of the welcome series, it gives you um, uh, an inventory of our products uh, and even some other free email series that you can do. So we give a lot away for free before we ask you to buy anything. In fact, you have to ask us to, to sell you if you want to buy something. So that's, that's my recommendation. That's cool. And, and, and also based what on, on what I heard is like a start with asking the question, what do I want before going and telling people order that they have to do it? Yes. And, and also when you're upset, anxious, frustrated, you can ask the question, where am I? See if you can determine where you are. Yeah. Uh, and, and that can help with, you know, controlling your current mood. I would, I would say it that way. It helps to control your current mood as well as solve problems, make better decisions, lead yourself and others, etc. You know, be more resourceful. All right. This is something we need to wish to everyone right now. So thanks for the conversation. That was a tough I mean, the discussion. So I'm not going to say I enjoyed from the from the enjoying perspective, but it was a kind of uh, interesting uh, deep dive for me. Thanks. You. Yeah, thank you. I, I am praying for everybody um, everywhere around this and sending lots of love and uh, and compassion. To learn more, visit procognita.com slash get agile. 